Hi, Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Resident Evil, the final chapter. I give the movie an F. This is the sixth movie in the live action Resident Evil series. Once again, Mila Jovovich returns as the series hero, Alice. Once again, Paul W.S. Anderson directs, writes, and produces this film. Mr. Anderson has written and produced all six movies. He's directed four out of the six movies, including this one and the previous one. Uh, so you'd think this would be a set up for something good, but if you follow the live action series as I have, uh, it's just kind of worse and worse. And this is a travesty, an absolute travesty. There are very few good things I can say about this movie. Um, well, Alice uses the combat knife. Uh, there's a very quick moment where you see Claire Redfield, a returning character and a classic character from the video game series, uh, quickly use the uh, lighter. The lighter is a very important uh, game piece in the Resident Evil lore. Uh, Wesker is there, but he's been reduced to a subordinate role. Uh, he's not the main, main bad guy. Uh, he doesn't even get to do something cool or, or some type of great action sequence like he has had in the previous movies. Uh, but there is one good callback to the first Resident Evil game. Uh, there's a scene where the heroes are running away from a bunch of Cerberus. Uh, they're special super Cerberus. <laughs> but still, they're running away and trying to shoot at them while uh, running. And that's a direct callback to the first Resident Evil game. So that moment I spout and enjoy. Uh, I have not played the Resident Evil 7 games, which has also come out the same month as this movie, so I don't know if there's any uh, pieces of that game in this movie. I doubt it because so little has to do with the game. In fact, uh, I'd better just get into the bad stuff right now. Okay, one of the bad things off of that is that the previous film set up the idea that Wesker gave Alice her powers back, and somehow Wesker, Alice, and the few remaining heroes would fight Umbrella and uh, save the world. Well, that premise is pretty much tossed out to the side because the movie now, it opens up in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is devastated. She's the last survivor. Somehow, Wesker actually uh, was lying about giving back the powers and just faked it, and he's off in the hive, the last... Uh, remaining place where the cure for all of this, all of this craziness, the cure is actually in the hive from the first movie. So Alice has 24 hours to get to the hive, find the cure and release it, or else what few human settlements there are around the world will die. So the first problem, like many sequels, this movie totally tarnishes and destroys everything that came before it. It's revealed that Alice is actually a clone this whole time of a, a real woman who is an executive of the Umbrella Corporation, which doesn't make sense because throughout the series, they're trying to get Alice, uh, or at least try to replicate, replicate the prime Alice, because they want to use her power and harness her as a weapon and various other things. So it's like, okay, well, if you have the original material and she, Alice is the first, why don't you just do exactly what you did before? Uh, another thing is that religion is brought into this. Is There's a heavy religious emphasis. And it's like, well, throughout the series, it's always been about corporate greed and dominating the world. And all of a sudden, now it's about cleansing the earth of humanity. That, again, that doesn't make sense. It's so out of nowhere. And there's various other things that just tarnishes the whole series. I thought this is really a great series. I mean, you might be thinking, yeah, it's just a stupid movie about zombies and gore and monsters and video game references. But yeah, that doesn't mean that some basic storytelling shouldn't happen. And considering that it is the same writer, producer, and uh, four out of six director, as well as the same leading actress, you think they have some type of cohesiveness together. Let's bring you to the next thing. This movie somehow doesn't understand how time and space works. And I don't mean time and space like uh, Back to the Future or Groundhog Day. I mean time as in time and space.
face. There's a moment where Alice is told there's only four minutes left. And then there's a, a chasing of the main villain and a fight with the main villain and having to get up an elevator shaft to the surface to release it. And the next time you see the clock on her watch, it's like 54 seconds. And you think to myself, wait a minute. Now, there is no way all of that took place in under three minutes. Even if it's somehow, if I took a stopwatch uh, to the footage and actually did happen within three minutes, the world within itself, it couldn't have happened in three minutes. It's just physically and temporally not possible for all that craziness to happen in three minutes. When I go to work, walking from the parking lot to the front gate sometimes takes two or three minutes, and I'm sometimes walking swiftly. So if I took in two or three minutes just to walk there, there's no way that uh, a giant action sequence happened within uh, three minutes. Or space. There's uh, these big giant uh, umbrella trucks that uh, tow uh, captured people behind uh, like uh, um, abating these other uh, zombies. So the idea is that uh, as the vehicle drives, the zombies chase the bait. Now, it's ridiculous because it's a giant tank, so the zombies will naturally follow the not, not noise and movement. But anyway, there's these human bait, so sometimes the vehicle stops for a few while and then starts again, and the bait is still alive and still there, which makes no sense because there's many times when the bait is like within reaching distance or at best two paces away. So the vehicle stops, then that bait should be dead. And we should at least see a scene of them releasing a new bait. But no, the vehicle stops. Uh, the people inside chat for a while, the bad guys, and then it drives off. And the bait is still alive. Like, that doesn't make any sense. <sighs> I hated this movie so much that when the credits uh, finally rolled, I practically ran out the theater. I couldn't leave the theater fast enough. My head hurt. I saw this movie on opening weekend, and the reason why it's taken so long for me to get this up, because every time I start thinking about this movie, my head hurts, and my head hurts now thinking about this. And I've had to refilm this review uh, three times because of technical issues, and each time I dread it and dread it and dread it because it's such an absolute horrible movie. It is so bad. There are Michael Bay movies that are more competent than this film. In fact, I saw the new Triple X Return as in a Cage movie before seeing this movie. And that movie was silly and stupid, but it was at least competent. Resident Evil, the final chapter, isn't competent. Paul W.S. Anderson, he has directed Mortal Kombat, he directed Alien vs. Predator, he uh, directed Event Horizon, all of those are very good movies. They're not fantastic, they're not phenomenal, but they're very good movies. And Event Horizon is considered a horror sci-fi classic. So what happened? And I can't even really blame Capcom Studio interference because there's so little to do with the video games in all these movies, especially this one. So I can't blame, you know, Capcom. I can't blame uh, Studio Interference since he's the executive producer and writer and director. Oh, God goodness. There is a mo There are three moments when Wesker is looking at the progress of Alice and he says, okay, lock down the base. All right, fine. And then several minutes later, he looks at the progress and he says, okay, let make sure the base is locked down. I want er no one in or out. I'm like, uh, shouldn't the base be locked down by now? And there's a moment where Alice and her team are trying to get inside the base, and there's a doorway that's wide open. There's a chamber that's wide open, and West is like, lock down, that, lock down that door now. And I'm like, why isn't the door already locked down? At least three times, you're given the order to lock down the base, and yet the base isn't locked down. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and then when you're taking the fact that the same guy that wrote this, you know, wrote that stuff down, as a director, he directed his actors, and then I assume he went with, to his editor and helped cut the film, and even if he didn't edit it, we, I'm assuming he watched the movie before he sent it to distributors to mass distribute. You know, it, it, like three or four times, like, lock down the base, lock down the base, lock down the base. The base should be locked down, and it's not locked down. What? So, yeah. I, 
So to wrap up, unless you've seen all the other movies, you just want to finish it, because that's pretty much how I was. I saw the other movies, might as finish it. Or if you're a big fan of the Resident Evil franchise like I am, I have several toys, I have almost all the video games, I have novelizations of the video games. Um, if you are a fan of Jovovich or Anderson or Jovovich and Anderson because they are actually married in real life and maybe that's the problem, maybe their uh, wedded bliss is blinding them from basic storytelling. Uh, so in other words, if you're a fan for some reason, go ahead and see it. But if you are not a fan, if you want decent horror or decent action or decent directing, or decent writing, uh, uh, do not see this movie. It's an F. Avoid it. It is an F. All right, that's my review. Thank you very much for watching. I'm High Heel Knight. Please share your comments. Please like and subscribe. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.